It's game two of the World Cup quarterfinals. It's really tense. And I'm going to show you a fascinating game between Nijat Abasov from Azerbaijan and Vidik Gujarati. This is a lesson in opening strategy. In particular, a lesson in the London system. It's a much derided opening, but it's very subtle indeed. Before we get going with the game, I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel um, to bring bring uh, subscribers over 100k. Really appreciate that, and thank you to everyone for your warm wishes. It is much appreciated. It's a nice milestone. Let's push on to 200,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to be an old man. Okay, here we go. So, Abasov, 28 years old from Azerbaijan. Vidik Gujarati, also 28 years old from India. Their first game, their first classical game, was drawn. Uh, Vidik was pushing all the way but couldn't quite win. So, what could Abasov do? Both players have had excellent tournaments so far. And you could say this is one of the main line positions of the London system. Bishop d6 is very popular, but then you can see that this bishop is kind of under attack. You don't want to exchange here. That makes life very easy. Whoops. I'll even play queen takes, mouse slip. So the normal move is bishop g3, so that white can recapture with the h pawn. Now, this is important. That didn't happen. Instead, Vidit played bishop b7. Well, a completely normal move, of course. Here, Abasov played h3. Oh, yes. <laughs> Am I going to criticise this move? Well, it's a normal move in this particular position. Why is white playing this? Well, it gives the bishop a bolt hole on h2. If, instead, white plays the normal move, that's the move we want to play. You don't want to waste time. But actually, then... Black is able to play bishop, uh, knight h5. Bishop, wow, I'm all over the place. Bishop g5 isn't possible because the bishop colors the square. And you see in this way, black is able to snag that bishop. So that's why the normal developing move, bishop d3, wasn't played here. And very quickly, Abasov played h3, which is a very standard move. And this bishop is a fantastic piece. Ah, and here, <laughs> Vidit plays bishop d6. Well, this is very subtle. So why did he waste a move playing like this? Well, now that the pawn is on h3, it's not possible to bring the bishop back to g3. Of course, that will just damage the pawn structure horribly. And you don't want to take on d6. That gives black the opportunity to push with e5. So this is the point of Vidit's clever play, that this bishop finds itself in a bit of a dilemma. Well, Abasov took on c5, so bishop takes. But of course, black has achieved something because white has given up that central point on d4 and then develops. Now, of course, if, if white can later on push forward with e4, then that's fine. But bishop d6, so this bishop going back and forth, again, the idea is simply to exchange off this powerful bishop, which just controls these nice squares here. And if the bishop goes to g5, of course, that gets exchanged off anyway after h6. So bishop takes and queen takes. Well, it seems to me that Vidit has negotiated his way in the opening very well, very carefully. He's got a nice centre pawn. Exchanging the dark square bishops means that the queen stands on a reasonable square. I think he's, frankly, I think he's neutralised White's opening system. Is it that easy to negotiate the London system? Well, perhaps not. Queen c2, now that's a very interesting move, a very clever move. Sets up this battery here. Uh, prepares a rook move to d1, maybe even castles queenside. 
Now, how should Black deal with this? Well, I think Black should deal with this in the standard way. Just castle quickly. And I don't think this is at all bad for Black. But here is where Vidit had a bit of a think. And I think he was overthinking the situation. He played knight e5. So he's eager to exchange pieces. Maybe he thought this is a way of neutralising um, White's position by exchanging. But let's see what happens. Knight takes, queen takes. Castles king side. And bishop d7. So I think Vidit's idea was that this bishop can easily come to the long diagonal. He might even have in mind castle's queen side, depending on how white plays. But after e4, this is very interesting. Although this looks quite mild, in fact, at this moment, it is actually very difficult for black to neutralize white's push with e4. So, for example, if castles then this pawn advances. I mean, this is a lovely attacking position. Well, in this position, it actually wins a pawn straight away. Okay, what else? Well, Vidit played the normal move, which is to exchange. But this presents problems. If black exchanges, then that bishop is pointing in two directions. Well, you can see it's not really, it's obviously not possible to castle king sides you could go queen side but that's very risky um, and that bishop looks excellent on this long diagonal it's a tricky position actually what about bishop c6 the problem here is that again after bishop e4 black is one move away from safety you know you don't you can't castle king side um after this there's an issue with this one. There's a check um, coming if if the rook defends the pawn. I mean, this is... it's tricky. So Vidit played knight d5. But now white is nice and active. And crucially, black has not castled yet. So that, you know, white is able to gain time and just has a little initiative here. The rook opposite the queen. Bishop c6 still doesn't feel that bad but watch what happens rook d1 okay white has developed nicely white has started the middle game but the king is still in the middle um you can't play castle's king side that's really that's got to be the safest spot for the king behind behind four pawns but after knight g3 you can see double attack basically the queen is hit and the pawn is hit here white wins a pawn so vidit went for castle's queen side so now we've got an interesting situation kings on opposite wings still doesn't look that bad but watch what happens i really like the way abasov plays this bishop f1 now that covers g2 so that means that the bishop on c6 isn't the problem steps out of the way of the knight as well king b8 yes you want to push the king into the corner queen d2 this is a fascinating move it looks peculiar to put the, the, the queen in the line of the rook. Um, but there, there are very interesting tactics here. So, for example, after knight f6, well, you can't take here. That's, that's simply winning for black because it's a double attack. Uh, so knight d6 is the move. It's interesting. The threat in the queen, potential threat here. And then it gets really tactical after this one. Could just spin the knight back. But you can also go for a queen sacrifice. This is really interesting. So after this, well, you have to try and assess what on earth is going on in this position. Well, I think um, white has potential to be better in this position, actually. But okay, that was another possibility. Uh, okay, why do I think white has potential to be better? Because... These are weak pawns. The king is not uh, is potentially exposed. White's king is completely secure. And if these rooks can double up here or double on the d file, um, and this bishop comes to g2, see there are no weaknesses in white's position. White has potential there. Anyway, 
that's uh, another story. Uh, vid it instead after a big think played queen c7. Knight c5. Knight coming to a very threatening position. H6. Okay, feels a bit slow. And watch what happens now. C4 pushing that knight. Queen here. Well, white has certainly gained something over those last two moves. So the knight has been pushed back. White has gained some territory. The queen now looks excellent. Uh, excellently placed on c3. Knight f5. Look at that bishop on f1 covering the g2 pawn. So white is completely secure on the king side. And this is fast. Look at this. Beautiful queenside pawn majority. And if that bishop can be pushed away, then that's wonderful. Okay, Vidit decides, right, I need to relieve some pressure. Let's just exchange pieces. But actually, white's initiative is so fast here. It's all about exposing the king. And creating a passed pawn, frankly. It's a, it's a double effect. If you compare this pawn structure, uh, this 4-2 four, four, against 3-3, three, three, where you know black has this queen's, king side pawn majority. Well, think back to Gukesh against Carlsen, where Carlsen eventually managed to do something with his king side pawn majority. This is very different. This is obviously having no effect on the position, but this is so fast. Well, I'm not quite sure what that's about, but frankly, this is not an easy position for black at all because I see no real counterplay. And Abasos moves here. So simple. Okay, this is an attempt to hold up these pawns, but it's, well, it's pretty futile. Um, C5 breaks open the position, getting to the king. If the king comes here, then b6 threatens a checkmate. So the king came here, but now the queen swoops in and takes a pawn. And it's all over. It's happened so quickly. And the king in desperate trouble, and that pawn is going all the way. Threatening to queen. Bishop comes back. Bishop b5, good move. If that's taken, then that's a new queen. A check, king came up, another check, g3, king completely secure on h2, h2, bishop f7, and now a little combination to finish, not very difficult, queen, bishop takes queen, and queen e8 mate, what a picture, that's supported by the bishop, and that's called a guéridon, checkmate, not an epaulette, a Guéridon checkmate. Anyway, wow, what a smooth game by Nijat Abasov, who knocks out Vidit from the World Cup and goes through to the semi-final. That's a, a stunning victory. And, you know, from almost nowhere, he's having the tournament of his life. I did not expect him to, to knock out Vidit, who's also had an excellent tournament. Let's come back to this position. It's here. Here is where Vidit makes his mistake. It's an old principle. Don't move a piece twice in the opening. 95. Mistake. I mean, it was hard to see that that led to such an unpleasant position, but, you know, each with each move had consequences. Let's come back here. I think black should just castle. And here you can play rook d8, supporting that pawn. Just kind of stalling e4. And, well, after queen c7, e4, you've got to be a little bit careful here. In fact, there's no threat at the moment, but just h6. And b6, just bring that bishop out. So little by little, um, black develops and shouldn't have any difficulties. If e5, here's the trick, knight d7 wins that pawn. The queen is kind of the wrong side. If the queen were on e2, it might be a different story. So yeah, I think simple chess, just castling here. Uh, I think Vidit overthought it with knight e5, but 
as I said, I think that's really instructive. Don't move a piece twice in the opening. Well, what about the other games? Um, Carlson went through. He managed to hold a draw with difficulty against Gukesh. And we have Caruana went through. He defeated Dominguez. And incredibly, Prague managed to defeat uh, Arjun Eragaisi. So that one goes to a tiebreak. More coming tomorrow. It's an absolutely fascinating tournament. Thanks for watching.